Hi friends who are joining us online. I'm Pastor Kristen Hansen from Desert Foothills United Methodist Church in Phoenix, Arizona. It's great to have you joining us today online. And if you haven't already done so, we invite you to go to desertfoothills.org and let us know that you joined us today for worship. You can also let us know your prayer requests and share your offerings or donations with our congregation at that time. Now, I want to invite you to take a moment to uh, mark in the comments where you're joining us from and uh, maybe write a note to us at the church and let us know how you're doing and uh, what's going on in your, your household during this season. If you haven't already done so, we invite you to get your elements for communion. We'll be sharing that a little bit later in the service. You don't have to go out and get anything special. Uh, in the church, we would usually use uh, some Hawaiian bread and some grape juice. But uh, if you have uh, crackers and water or anything like that on hand, any kind of bread uh, or a drink to drink, you can use that for communion today and join in with the family of God. a friend uh, of mine who is joining us today to uh, share a message and I uh, just want to welcome Mary. Um, Mary is an educator, a speaker, and an advocate who works with school districts and nonprofits and churches. Um, she currently works with PCG Incorporated in Indianapolis and recently served as the interim pastor at Maple Grove Church of God in Anderson, Indiana. And in ministry, Mary continues to use her voice to promote equity and coach allies in social justice work. She is a mother to two sons, ages 22 and 15, and a daughter, age 12. And she is from what is my hometown in Anderson, Indiana. Um, Mary is uh, also the daughter of an incredible woman that I got to work with, and she was um, an incredible example in ministry. Um, I consider the work that her mom did uh, just some of the best work that I have seen in ministry. Uh, I'm incredibly thankful for their family and for the legacy that they continue on. And of course, because she's from my hometown, that's always, uh, of course, something very special. So she's going to be sharing a little bit later in the service. Would you take your, your two hands and let's put them together. Um, you can put them together however you'd like to, but um, as you put them together, I want you to think about uh, your two hands and how close they are to one another. And take a moment to breathe and to feel one hand in the other. This is as close to you now as God is to you, closer even. God is with us. And as we come closer to God, as we, as we come closer to God and God comes closer to us, we can understand what's most important in our world. 
God, during this hour that we have together, we um, remember that we're not alone. We remember that you put uh, people and uh, your spirit and wonderful events and spiritual gifts and all the things of the kingdom close to us so that we know that we're not alone, that we're loved by you always, and that no matter what, you're, you're there with us. God, we're thankful for this reminder and this gift that you give to us. And, and God, as we remember how close our hands are one to another, we are thankful for your presence in our lives. In Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Would you join me in prayer? God, we pray today to you who is our creator, our redeemer, and our sustainer. We lift up all of our prayer requests that we have in our hearts and for those that we may not know, but God, we know that you are in our presence and that you're with us always. We pray today for those with COVID-19 and for families that have lost loved ones, especially for the people, pastors, and communities here in Desert Southwest Conference of the United Methodist Church, as we hear of rising cases across the country and death tolls even within our sister churches. We pray for the caregivers and for the healers who are working so diligently now for months on end. Give them strength and comfort. Prayers for the leaders of our government to make wise decision on every level at such a time as this. May the powers and principalities of our nation work for the good of the people. And prayers for the reality that inequality and injustice continues to threaten and make even more vulnerable the brown and black neighbors during this health crisis. May there be justice and true freedom. Prayers also for those who have to work and have to go out during this time. For those who won't be able to make it financially and have to make hard choices. May we find ways to support each other through these hard times. And prayers for the administrators and teachers and students and families as they prepare for another school year and wonder how they can do so safely. And for those who may not be able to return to their jobs at school, for those who choose to retire rather than to put themselves at risk. Prayers for the lonely, for the fearful, and for the depressed, for those with anxiety, and for those who need help and can't find it because there are so many people who are in need of help right now. Prayers for the deniers, for the dissenters, for those who seek to spread discord, and for all others who won't believe until someone they know has it. Prayers for the scientists, even as we hear that it may not be possible to create antibodies or herd immunity, that the death rates are going to climb, that we may get it and we may get it again. Even with all our intelligence and wisdom and technology that we rely on, we recognize our frailty. We cry out for mercy, dear God. Our parent who is in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. God, you are creator, redeemer, and sustainer. You're more than enough for us at all times, even in a hard time like this. Challenge us, 
comfort us, and lead us. In Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. So we remember how Jesus was with his friends, the disciples at the table having dinner, and it was the last time that we, they would be gathered together like this. Matthew 26 from the message says, during the meal, Jesus took and blessed the bread and broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat, this is my body. And then taking the cup and thanking God, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you, this is my blood, God's new covenant poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I'll not be drinking wine from this cup again until the new day when I'll drink with you in the kingdom of my father. And so let us bless this prayer, and this is a repeat after me prayer, uh, holy and living God. Holy and living God. We gather in your name. We gather in your name. In union with each other. In union with each other. In our bodies and our spirits. In our bodies and our spirits. With the comforting presence. With your comfort and presence. So that we might be your comfort to others. So that we might be your comfort to others. Bless this food. Bless, Bless this, this food. food. And break open our hearts. And break break open, open our hearts. Bless this fruit. Bless, Bless this, this fruit. fruit. And pour out your love. Amen. And so I invite you to take uh, the items that you have for uh, community day. Uh, if you don't have it, it's okay. You can go get it uh, and begin to eat together uh, from, uh, you know, I have today a piece of cracker with me uh, and some water with me and begin to eat together with the and as we do that, I always like to say, sometimes we're more thankful after we've had a bite or taken a drink. So let's say it together. We're going to say the word grateful. Ready? Grateful. 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 Amen. Now, as we feast here at the table, we also feast on the word. And so I want to invite um, our first liturgist to come and to share uh, our gospel or our, uh, I'm sorry, our psalm this morning. Uh, I'm not sure who is the first liturgist this morning. Is that me? Sharon Newman Matt? Sharon. That's me. Sharon, I'm going to come to you and spotlight you. And if you're not unmuted, you can do that. Oh, I see you are. Great. And would you share our, our reading with us this morning? Go ahead, pray with that. That's a new bread. Can you hear me? Yes. Yep. Okay. So this is from the Psalms 145, and it's verses 8. 14. Good friend, take to heart what I'm telling you. Collect my counsels and guard them with your life. Tune your ears to the world of wisdom and set your heart on the life of understanding. That's right. If you make insight your priority and won't take no for an answer, searching for it like a prospector panning for gold, like an adventurer on a treasure hunt, Believe me, before you know it, fear of God will be yours. You'll have come upon the knowledge of God. And here's why. God gives out wisdom free, is plain spoken in knowledge and understanding. He is a rich mine of common sense for those who live well, a personal bodyguard to the candid and sincere. He keeps his eye on all who live honestly and pays special attention to his loyally committed ones. So now you can pick out what's true and fair and find all the good trails. That is certainly a, a good word for this season and we're thankful for uh, you sharing with us today, Sharon. We also have a reading this morning from uh, Matthew 11. And uh, I invite, uh, is that right, Matthew? That doesn't feel right. Uh, Leslie, I'm going to let you read the scripture. <laughs> okay. This is from Matthew chapter 11, verses 16 through 30 from the Message Bible. How can I account for this generation? The people have been like spoiled children, whining to their parents. We wanted to skip rope, and you were always too tired. 
We wanted to talk, but you were always too busy. John came fasting and they called him crazy. I came feasting and they called me a lush, a friend of the riffraff. Opinion polls don't count for much, do they? The proof of the pudding is in the eating. Next, Jesus let fly on the cities where he had worked the hardest, but whose people had responded the least, shrugging their shoulders and going their own way. Doom to you, Shirazin. Doom, Bethsaida. If Tyr and Sidon had seen half of the powerful miracles you have seen, they would have been on their knees in a minute. At Judgment Day, they'll get off easy compared to you. And Capernaum, with all your peacocks strutting, you are going to end up in the abyss. If the people of Sodom had had your chances, the city would still be around. At Judgment Day, they'll get off easy compared to you. Abruptly, Jesus broke into prayer. Thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. You've concealed your ways from sophisticates and know-it-alls, but spelled them out clearly to ordinary people. Yes, Father, that's the way you like to work. Jesus resumed talking to the people, but now tenderly. The Father has given me all these things to do and say. This is a unique father-son operation, coming out of father and son intimacies and knowledge. No one knows the son the way the father does, nor the father the way the son does, but I'm not keeping it to myself. I'm ready to go over it line by line with anyone willing to listen. Are you tired, worn out, burned out on religion? Come to me, get away with me and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. Thank you, Leslie. And uh, we have a, a passage from Luke 10 uh, that I'll share with us for part of our word here at the table, our feast at the table. After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them two by two ahead of him to every town and place where he was about to go. He told them, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Go, I am sending you out like lambs among wolves. Do not take a purse or bag or sandals and do not greet anyone on the road. When you enter a house, first say, peace to this house. If someone who promotes peace is there, your peace will rest on them. If not, it will return to you. Stay there, eating, stay there eating and drinking whatever they give you, for the worker deserves his wages. Do not move around from house to house. When you enter a town and are welcomed, eat what is offered to you. Heal the sick who are there and tell them the kingdom of God has come near to you. But when you enter a town and you're not welcomed, go into its streets and say, even the dust of your town, we wipe from our feet as a warning to you. But be sure of this, the kingdom of God has come near. I tell you, it will be more bearable on that day for Sodom than for that town. Woe to you, Chorazin, woe to you, Bethsaida, for if the miracles that were performed to you had been performed in Tyre and Sidon, they would have been repented long ago, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. But it will be more bearable for Sidon and for Tyre and Sidon and for judgment for you and for Capernaum. Will you be lifted to the heavens? No, you will go down to Hades. Whoever listens to you listens to me and whoever rejects you rejects me. But whoever rejects me rejects him who sent me. The 72 returned with joy and said, Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. And he replied, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. However, do not rejoice that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. At that time, Jesus, full of joy through the Holy Spirit, said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to the little children. Yes, Father, for this is what you were pleased to do. All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows who the Son is except for my Father, and no one knows who the Father is except the Son, and those who, to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Then he turned to the disciples and said privately, Blessed are the eyes that see what you see. For I tell you that 
Many prophets and kings wanted to see what you see, but did not see it, and to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. These are the words from God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I'd like to invite uh, our friend, our speaker, our, our gifted sharer this morning, uh, Mary, to come and to bring us uh, the fruits of the spirit that God is giving to her this morning. Prayers for you as you speak, Mary. Thank you so much, um, Kristen. You're a, a dear friend and a family friend, and I'm just so grateful for this connection. Glad to be here with all of you today um, for my first time speaking in Arizona. Um, and, and I'm just honored to be with you. You know, I was thinking about um, what I wanted to talk to you about today. And I said to Kristen, the, the theme of the message is um, come near and listen. You know, so many times I think in this, in this world where we're going through a pandemic, we are focused very much on the ways in which we are distant. You know, we're all talking to each other over Zoom today, but in the body of Christ, in our hearts and in our lives, in our words to one another, we can be connected. And so today I'm asking you to enter in with me and to, to come close so that we can, can connect. You know, my earliest member, memories of scripture um, are saying a verse around the table as as kids before we ate and before grace. And I remember hearing scripture read and I, I um, always was a child who was raised in a home with two ordained ministers and listening to the Bible. But when scripture really became personal for me, when it, when it changed was um, my father sitting with me close to me on the couch and reading from the 91st Psalm, which was his favorite and um, became my favorite, but listening to him read it to me and to put my name into the words in the scripture and how that became real, seeing myself in the story. And even as he was teaching me about the word of God and teaching me about the father's words for me, then we were close. We were connected. We were experiencing the word of God together. Um, in ways that connected us and made it meaningful beyond just knowing that there was a message there, right? So that's my favorite memory. And, and as I speak with you today, and as you listen to the passages from earlier, I hope that you started to think about yourself in the story, to think about what God is speaking to you and how he's asking you to listen today. Even in the, the first passage, um, which is from Proverbs, and it's the second chapter, talking about um, being a good friend and saying, friend, take to heart what I'm telling you. You know, I don't, I don't know you, Desert Foothills um, Church. We are new friends. We are getting to know each other today. But I call you friend. I call you friend because we are brothers and sisters in the faith, because God loves us and we love one another. So I'm calling you my friend and I'm asking you today to come close and to listen to the things that, that I believe God is asking me to share with you, but also just to listen to my heart in this. Because even in that same um, first couple of verses where it says, collect my counsels and guard them with your life, tune your ears to the word, world of wisdom and set your heart on a life of understanding but take these things to heart and that's what i hope happens as as i share today and as we um, listen and and experience this together you know the work of the lord the work of justice the work of sharing and i believe you are a justice church it's it's tough work but it's work of the heart first that because we've experienced the transformation in our spirits, we, we want to share with others the blessing and the beauty of what we know, what we've seen, what we have faith in. And so there's a lot to be said in this world for being able to bring something 
that is a message of love and a message of hope to people where all around us we're seeing that many people are without it. That these are difficult times, these are challenging times. And I'm gonna be honest with you friends, as, as a black woman there are things that I'm experiencing right now that are really challenging for me beyond just the everyday, beyond the things that I already knew, there are new things. Some are frightening. Some are things that are, that are new and different. And I have to talk to my children about those. And we're experiencing them as a family. And I'm also experiencing them with my friends and with my community. And the only way that we can manage this, that we can make some sense, that we can make some headway in any of the things that are happening is for us to come close to one another, to be ready to listen. And I've asked my friends like, you know, Kristen and others, I've said, please, please listen to the lament that people of color are sharing, that black people are sharing about their experiences, about the things that they're afraid of and the things that are happening in the world. So when I say, good friend, take to heart what I'm telling you. When you hear other people say to you, please listen to what I'm telling you, then I want you to hear that in closeness, in connection as they share, and to know that also God is near. Just as we opened our time together, saying that as close as our two hands are right now, that we can put them together, that that's how close God is. In the midst of everything, it may be easy to forget that. You may think, where is God in all of this? He's near. And we have only to sit and to listen, to be close to one another because he has gathered us together for just that purpose, to listen. You know, I've, I've never thought of myself as, as an Esther uh, for such as, such a time as this kind of person. But I feel like um, in this day and age, there are a lot of people who are beginning to speak out and to say things that they've never had the courage to say before, that they are learning and listening and that they are trying to make changes for the betterment of all of us, right? And not just because it's about social justice, but it's, it's the work of Jesus carried over into a world that is hurting. And they're stepping up to that. They're stepping into that. It's this incredible um, courage. And maybe they're not Esther's, but I believe that they recognize that the message that's on their heart, that the call to listen is something that is for such a time as this, when it is so important. Now more than ever, I would argue that we are sitting close together and that we are listening. You know, when I was a little girl, my, um, my grandmother would, would gather my brothers and sisters close and she would read us stories, and especially for my little sister and I, because we were very close in age, and she would color in the pictures in the books with brown girls so that we had books that we could see ourselves in. And those times snuggling with her, having her read the memories of that, are so powerful for me. And as a parent, I had moments where I read with my children, where I'd gather them up in my lap and I would read them a story and I would look at their faces to see if they were understanding or absorbing what was going on. And I would listen to their questions and I would point out the illustrations and we would talk. You see, in the moments where we are being taught and in the moments when we are teachers, the closeness is important because the connection is so important. So when I say come near, I'm asking us to connect in ways that are not necessarily physical because we don't have the advantage of doing that right now, but are part of our spiritual connection, a part of our faith connection, or part of our human connection. Friends, I'm asking you to come near and to listen because I believe that what you are called to do right now is to stand with those who are crying for justice. Will it be scary? I would imagine so. For people who've never forayed into this before, who've never had an opportunity 
to stand up and say, I'm a justice warrior. You don't, when you're a little kid, think that you're gonna grow up and be a justice warrior. You might think you're gonna be Superman or Wonder Woman, but even those are icons of, of justice. But Jesus is the icon of justice that we know. We carry him with us every day. Yeah. And he's asking us yeah. to listen to what is being taught, mm -hmm. to listen to the lament of people who have long been without justice, who have long been without an opportunity to experience what freedom really feels like, mm -hmm. who have long been muted and silenced and not had an opportunity to share from their hearts, to have their voices heard. Mm -hmm. You know, um, the Underground Railroad is such a huge part of our history and Harriet Tubman and um, they called her Moses because of her ability to lead the people to freedom. But it was not without a network of connection, places to stop, places to, to be able to renew their strength, to rest, to eat. That network, so important. And I know that she must have prayed for God to send her people who would be part of that network. And I have to tell you folks, for generations, I believe that we have been praying not just to be able to stand up and leverage our own strength as people of color to, to ask for justice, to seek equality, to look, to have the things that we believe that the country was built on, but also the promise of just living in brotherhood and connection with one another. And I know that I have prayed on my knees for friends, for family, for connections, for people in the body to also be a part of that, to stand with us, to use their voices in ways they might not have before, to learn the things and listen to the things that are difficult for all of us to admit have happened and have kept us apart. But as I looked at the, the Luke 10 passage and, and thought about how, that, how deeply that resonated in my soul, that all I could do was think about the harvest. If when, when Jesus was sending 70 out into the world and saying, you've got a job to do, in his closeness with them, in his connection with them, he taught them, he equipped them. He told them what they would need to say, what they would need to do. He even gave them an out for when things didn't go well, when there were people who were not open. He said, you wipe the dust off your feet and you move on. Folks, there are, there are wolves out there, right? <laughs> There are people who have already dug in their heels and said, I don't care about justice. I don't care about this stuff. I don't want to hear any more about race. I'm tired of talking about it. Well, guess what? I am too. It's hard to have to every day spend time thinking about the color of your skin and how that impacts your interactions the things that people will say about you, that they will think about you, the things that they will miss about you because of what you look like. I don't want anyone to miss that I'm a black woman. I don't want them to miss that I am a follower of Christ because these are things that are a huge part of who I am. They make my gifts unique. They make my voice sound different than your voice. They make what I say and what I share look different and sound different. But as friends, as brothers and sisters, I ask you to come close and to listen. Because what I want to do is to encourage you, to help you, to equip you, to teach you about the ways in which you can stand up for justice. And you can do that in your community. You can do that in your families. You can do that with your friends, 
you can do that with people at work and you'll have to step into those places. But God is near in the midst of everything that we've been seeing and experiencing. God is near. He is here. He is close to us. He knows what he's asking us to do. He knows the challenges that are before us. He knows the people that will try to get in our way. He knows every hard thing that can happen. And still, he asks and he equips and he loves us through all of it. In the teaching, there is closeness. In the equipping, there is closeness. God brings us near to him so that we can experience his love and he can give us his strength and his courage. And like that, in the teaching that you will do of others, be close, be loving, speak truth. To borrow a line from my favorite podcast, let's sit crooked and talk straight. Let's be face to face. Let's connect in personal ways. Let's care for one another. Let's demand justice because it is the work of Jesus. Let's listen and learn and be equipped in the ways that we need to, to help to inform and to educate. And let's do this together. Let's stay connected. This is close work. This is not work from a distance. This is close work in our hearts and in the hearts of others. And so my prayer for you is that the Lord will bless you and that he will keep you and that he will be with you as you go and as you fight. And because on my knees I have prayed for you, I thank God for you in the work that you will do. Thank you so much for letting me be a part of this today and for letting me share. And thank you, Mary, for spending this time with us, also for coming close to us and for being willing to share with us, too, and for opening your heart and what God is speaking to you, too. We are thankful for you uh, because you have been willing to be vulnerable with us and to be open with us, and it helps us to see the face of God. We are a people of... Uh, deep compassion. We are a people of the justice and the peace and the mercy and the forgiveness that God gives us. We are a people who speak love into the world. And sometimes love is difficult. Love is, peace is difficult, especially restorative peace that calls not just for an absence of violence, but goes far beyond that into the justice of calling out those who oppress others, of the justice of of bringing healing to others. And we hear many voices in our world, but the one voice that we should always be hearing is that of Jesus Christ, the true bringer of peace, of restorative justice into our world. And so I, I welcome you. If you wanna talk about uh, what this looks like in our lives, I know I am open to that. I know Mary, I believe is, is probably open to that too. She's uh, a wonderful, again, I, I love to hear her because I feel my heart beating um, when I hear her. It's, it's just um, a wonderful gift to have her join us today. So let's take a moment and pray together for this, um, this justice and peace. Uh, you know, in the United Methodist Church, uh, you all know this as Methodists, of course, but we have this long history of uh, peace with justice. We even have a Sunday that's called Peace with Justice Sunday. <laughs> Isn't that cool? Um, it reminds us of what it means. It's not, you know, Jesus wasn't just here to call us to peace, but, you know, Jesus flipped tables. Jesus upset the whole system. Uh, you know, this was revolutionary. He would call crowds, huge crowds to come out. Uh, and if we just call Jesus a peacemaker, we are missing uh, the large story of the kingdom of God uh, and the wonderful restorative justice that we're called to participate in on this earth. So uh, I invite you to pray with me and uh, 
thank God for the gifts that God has given each of us during this time to express. So let's pray together. God, we thank you for uh, your incredible call on each of our lives toward this beautiful kingdom of God that you show to us. You show us glimpses of what it can look like in our world. You show us glimpses of what it looks like within our souls, within our hearts. And we're thankful for this beautiful expression of what it all looks like. And God, we know that we fall short often. We fall on our knees. We skin our knees along the way and we get sidetracked by other things. And sometimes it's people who call us in other directions. And yet you are always so patiently waiting with us and calling us on to where we can feel your presence and your spirit, where we can experience this incredible long call of justice in our world and restorative healing of all of those who have been downtrodden. You call us over and over again to minister to the poor and the outcasts, the widows and the orphans, those who are in prison, those who are refugees, those who are foreigners in our land, those who uh, just need to know that they are loved by you, God. And our prayers include those who are sick and those who uh, need to feel the love of God because they're so alone in our world. God, help us to see this beautiful uh, kingdom of heaven that you've created and laid out before us to participate in. And God, help us to call that into being with our very selves, our lives, our actions, all of who we are. God, bring our minds, bring our souls, and bring our spirit into oneness with you and what that would look like on earth as it is in heaven. We thank you for all of this, God, and we thank you for Mary, who has come and shared uh, openly with us and, and has bared her soul to us in what you've been saying to her. And we thank you for her family. We pray a blessing on them. We thank you for the work that she does. We thank you for the spirit that you have given to her to be able to speak hope and peace into our world. And we're thankful, God, for, for all of who she is. And God, in Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining us today, and may you have a resilient week full of hope.